Sometimes you'll want to configure read only API access for certain clients. So for example, maybe you're going to create a web dashboard that is used for viewing purposes only. Well, there's no particular reason to um, give the client responsible for, for generating that dashboard um, additional capabilities beyond read, such as insert, uh, put, patch, or delete. Um, using Dream Factory, it's very easy to create roles, uh, role-based access controls, that is, which are read-only in nature. So in this short video, I'll walk you through how that's accomplished. So for starters, I've created a uh, MySQL API using Dream Factory, meaning to say Dream Factory was provided with a set of credentials and the platform uh, generated a uh, 39 endpoint API for that MySQL database. And if I click on the services tab and then choose MySQL, I can show you what that configuration looks like on this screen, we just designated the uh, URI namespace, which in this case is MySQL. We've provided a label and a description. It, the API is active. I'll go ahead and press next. And here you'll see the credentials. Uh, this is just a, a test database that I use for development purposes. And it contains um, one of the um, example MySQL databases available on the MySQL website. So if I jump over to Insomnia, which is an HTTP testing tool, you'll see that I am referencing the URL where the Dream Factory instance is hosted. This happens to be hosted on our Genie platform. So you can head over to www.dreamfactory.com if you'd like to start a two-week trial and, and test Dream Factory out. And again, we're going to contact the MySQL API, and specifically, we're going to retrieve data from the employees table. So if I go ahead and press send, we should see some data return in JSON format. Now, if I click on the header here, you'll see that we're also passing along an API key. That's because there's no such thing as a, a, a public API as far as Dream Factory is concerned. Every Every request must be accompanied by an API key and also, depending on your project, um, a, uh, a JWT, JSON web token, uh, following user authentication via Active Directory and so forth. If I do not provide that key and press send, we're going to receive a 400 bad request in return because the client did not adhere to server expectations. I'll bring that back. I'll press send, and of course that data returns. Now, this particular role, role-based access control, which is associated with the key, has both read and insert access to all of the generated endpoints. And I'll show you what that rule looks like in a moment. Um, but for now, let's jump over to this get departments endpoint. Again, same host, same API, but this time we're going to contact or retrieve data from the departments table. I'll press send, and sure enough, those departments return. Now further, I mentioned that, there, that this role-based access control has read and insert capabilities. So if I click on this third demonstration endpoint, insert employee, you'll see, again, same URL, but this time we're going to post to the endpoint rather than get data from the endpoint which means we're also going to pass along a payload. And that payload is here. We're going to pass along a, an example employee. And if I go ahead and press send, we should see a 200 status code in return. And Dream Factory in this case is just returning the primary key for, um, for this record. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the rule. We're going to change the rule to allow only read-only access to one or two endpoints. To do that, I'm going to return to Dream Factory. I'll click on the Rules tab. And next, I'll click on the MySQL rule, which is associated with that API key under the Apps tab. Next, I'll click on Next to go to the Access window. And it's here where you're going to use the point-and-click controls to manage 
um, what it is that a client in possession of that API key can do with the API. Here in this first dropdown, I've chosen the MySQL API. And when you choose a service here or an API, this component dropdown will auto update to expose all of the endpoints available to that API. Currently, it's set to star or asterisk because that means all endpoints. And furthermore, you'll see under the access tab that we're allowing git, which is read, and post, which is create access. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this to allow only access to the employees table. Furthermore, we're going to make it read only. So I'll go ahead and um, just click Git, removing the post. And why don't we add access to one more endpoint as well. This time, we will choose maybe the salaries table instead of the departments table. I'll go ahead and choose salaries. And again, we're going to make this read only. I'll go ahead and save, updating that rule. And when I return to Dream Factory, um, sure enough, I should be able to continue retrieving employees, which I'll do now. And that was successful. But what if I try and retrieve departments? I'll go ahead and press send. And sure enough, this time the user receives a 401 unauthorized because this rule does not possess appropriate privileges for retrieving that information. If I change this to salaries, however, I should be able to retrieve the salary info, sure enough. Finally, if I click on the insert employee record, we'll go ahead and just bump this key up, and I'll go ahead and, and post this data to the endpoint. Again, we receive a 401 unauthorized due to lack of appropriate permissions. So hopefully this short video shows you just how easy it is to create role-based access controls uh, for your clients and then update those access controls as your business needs evolve over time. If you'd like to give Dream Factory a whirl, I recommend heading over to www.dreamfactory.com and starting a hosted trial. Alternatively, you can go to GitHub and download our open source version from our GitHub site. Thank you.